Please, I have so much juicy information to go through this faction episode. Let me bring you up to speed and let me tell you the story the best way I possibly can. Because this is going to be kind of difficult for me. I've got all the information I kind of need. I just don't know if I'm going to be telling it wrong or not. Today, this is the story of how our faction raided one of our biggest enemies last night. All while I was sleeping. Guys, let's jump into this episode. If you enjoy it, hit that like button down below and wait to near the end of the video because I'm about to reveal something really big for the faction. But if you enjoy this, hit the like button down below and let's jump into this episode. So we're gonna start off the story here in the Minecraft screen. You might be like, wait, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like play Minecraft. No, don't worry. I'm not gonna sit here and just say a story, you know what I mean? Like, that would be a very boring episode. So at 2.52 a.m., my faction started to raid our biggest enemies, or that's when the process started. They started building the cannon at 2.52 a.m. Now, a lot of our faction members are Australian, and they, they're from New Zealand, basically completely different time zones to me. So, like, when this was going on, yeah, it was really early in the morning for me, but it was probably in the evening for them. But the only thing is, this replay footage is not mine, it's Mikey's. Now, Mikey is from the U.S. UK, I believe. So I have no idea what Mikey was doing up at this time, but he was up. But he kindly sent me over this replay footage of the whole process going down. So this ain't mine. I just literally dragged this into my replay viewer so I can actually view it. View it. So here you can see this is where the adventure begins. Building the cannon. So the cannon that Mentrix and Mikey are building is for a faction called Lost, who are worth around $40 million, which is a lot of money on the old F-top. Hopefully I can do this story justice. Now, apologize if basically Mikey is invisible, and um, you might see like an invisible person placing stuff. It's not abuse, it's nothing like that, but basically replay recording is very glitchy. When you start TPing around on a server or something like that, it basically can make you invisible. So just getting that out there now. <laughs> but anyway, so as they start the process of building this cannon, AZ Passion comes to these guys and basically says, Hey, I found a raid which we can basically seg into. And this raid that she found is worth $18 million. And this all happens while they're attempting to raid one of their biggest enemies. Our biggest enemies. So this is when Mikey TPs to AZ Passions and basically like, Show me the raid. And this is the raid that we have here. But first, they need to break into this base, and I'm going to show you how they got in in just a second. But here you can see that there are skeleton spawners, which are worth 300000 to buy. So this is worth a lot of value right here. There's magma cubes. There are also people online in this faction at the time. Now, right now, I pause the time, so nothing's going on right now. AZ is still paused up here. But if we follow her down, I'm going to show you how we got into this base. So if we follow her all the way down, all the way to the bottom... Apparently, as well, just an update, the faction that this faction raided, apparently the guy was like actually super chill. The person who owns the faction is a really nice guy. So, boom. There we go. She, as you can see, she slab, she creeper eggs the slab, which then blows up this. But the thing is, like, that would have been fine. Like, you know what I mean? If they didn't have this, it would have been fine. But the thing is, they had a base at the bottom, the like, just at the bottom, which usually you don't do, you leave, like, a layer all the way going up, and maybe your base might start, like, Y100, and here you'd have maybe, like, reverse layers, but not only did they have a base here, um, they also had a ladder going all the way here to nearly the top of their base. So this base was riddled with exploits. Now, the guy, they got in contact with the guy that they raided, the basically owner of this faction they're raiding right now, and showed him the exploit, and he was like, hey, can, basically what happened is, Ted ended up helping the guy out and saying, like, don't do this, like, this is how you make a base, so I don't think this guy is ever gonna really mess up again, or he's been taught how not to anyway, so I thought that was super nice, because apparently the guy was super chill. So I asked Mikey... Um, what was down here? What was in the chest? Now, there was absolutely nothing really worth of value down here. Really, everything that's worth value is all the way up here. All the way, all the way, all the way up here. With, as you can see, people online. They're raiding this with people online. And they're raiding this while they're trying to raid their biggest enemy. So they're doing two raids in one here. And this is the first raid. So I am going to speed this up and I'm going to show you how they managed to get all the way up the base. Because as you can see, 
There's no really way of getting up unless you really cannoned or I guess if you glitched, but there was no glitching involved. So what happened was they used custom creeper eggs, levitating creeper eggs. And this is how they got in. So what they did is they used levitating creepers. So what Mikey would do is he'd pearl up, plop a levitating creeper down, and then try pearl up again and see if he can seg that bad boy. And that's the way that they were able to climb up the base. Now, hopefully, I, can, I haven't actually seen it happen properly, but hopefully now Mikey will do it and actually show it off. So he's probably waiting 18 seconds to be able to pearl again. The only thing is, like, I'm fascinated to see, like, they need to get higher. But I guess once they blow a hole here, then they're closer so they can just keep climbing. They probably wasted... A decent amount of money on like segs just to do this, but they did it. They really did do it. So there we go. He's pearling again. So there you go. He's trying to seg it. And does he blow up? <gasps> He's not blowing up. Okay, how did they actually do this? Okay. So now Mikey has to wait like another 18 seconds. All right, what we're going to do is we're just going to speed up this and see what happens here. All right, let's speed this up. And just see. Hopefully Mikey doesn't go to shop or anything. Okay, there he's trying to pearl again. Missed. <laughs> there we go. Pearls again. Mikey's still trying to pearl. Can't do it yet. <laughs> Keeps missing. Okay, Mikey's done it again. Place on another seg. So he's trying to put it in the corner. I guess that's the best way he can technically do it. There we go. Boom. He sets off the one in the corner. Then AZ sets off the other ones. And now they are a little bit uh, higher up. So it should make the process of climbing up the base easier. Oh, how do they do it? I'm, I'm interested to see. Yeah, are they just going to climb their way up? Ah, so there you go. They're able to climb with the water and there's a place to seg there and then just pretty much light it on fire and they can just keep climbing up the base. The water's actually helping them here. I don't think if they had water, they wouldn't be able to do this. Well, they probably would have been, but it would have been a pain. So boom, as you can see, they're about to blow up that seg. There we go, nearly up the base. So yeah, I say a lot of money was wasted on segs today. But I think it was definitely worth it. So once these guys got through this reverse layer, as you can see, all they then had to do was literally <laughs> climb up the stairs that so happened to be there and seg straight in, as they did. But here's where things get interesting, because this guy was just moving around a second ago, and looks like he's just gone AFK. But he's still there. So our faction members can probably see him right now and are really trying to get in. All they gotta do is get a seg in here and they can get in. It's difficult because you just gotta time it right, but it's possible. There you go. They just gotta keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing and get over this little bit of obby and they're in. All while this guy is sitting right here, probably waiting for his nice old skeletons to uh, rack up so we can kill him for a little while. Pretty tense stuff. <laughs> Oh god, the guy's back and they're trying to seg in. <gasps> He's gonna AFK again. Oh my god. So this is- Oh my god! The guy is literally grinding while they're just outside the wall, ready to seg. Dude, they better get geared. I haven't seen any of this footage. So yeah, just in case you don't know, um, I have 8 times speed on, so this guy isn't a mega hack store, it's just super speed. <laughs> Imagine you were able to grind that quick. That would be freaking insane. All right, so let's all right, so let's keep pressing play. Let's see what happens here. What do they do? This guy is literally grinding away. He is there while these guys are literally. Look, I can see him waiting. They don't know what to do. They do, they're getting geared. They're getting geared. Oh god, they're gonna seg straight in and just surprise attack him. All right, let's slow this down to normal speed. What happens here? So they literally breach. They seg and just jump straight in for him. The guy's in utter shock. <laughs> Oh no, he was only wearing weekly gear as well, so there's no way of surviving. As you can see, all those skeleton spawners were mopped up. That's a lot of value right there. That's a lot. Now, this faction was worth $18 million. I would say a huge chunk of that was those skeletons, so we raided quite a bit from these guys. But like I said, Ted got in contact with this guy afterwards and teached him and stuff, and apparently he's a really nice guy. But here we go. PvP starts to break out. This guy comes in to defend his base. I admire his bravery because he seems to be the only one online, but still he comes back to defend his base. And look, he has an axe, so it looks like he comes back with the best stuff he possibly has. But I admire his bravery, but I don't think there's really anything he can do really to defend now because most of their value has already been stolen. And that is, guys, how we end up raiding the first raid in this four-hour process. Then we move on. So around 20 minutes later, the raid back on our biggest enemies continue. Just like that. Like nothing ever happened. As you can see, Mikey gets back to canning. This could easily be, I say, about 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. 
something like that. Apparently, the raid had all this process ended at like six in the morning. So this went on for a very, very long time. And all while this was happening, what was I doing? Sleep in my bed. Sleep in my bed. I hate sleep so freaking much. I'm so jealous, man. So anyway, this is when the real raid begins. A $40 million raid. This is big. So for ages, Mikey is basically building solo right now. And then the faction then start to join in. Mentris is now back. They're starting to make it. It's basically already nearly made. So while the building process is going on in the background, I'm going to let you know that Mikey and Mentrix have ba been basically doing recon on this base. They've been watching this base for a while, replay mod. And what they've aimed at is basically member boxes. They're not, they haven't aimed at any spawners. So this raid was a huge risk, but they, it was a calculated risk because Mikey has been watching the enemy faction and seeing whose chest room is who whose through a replay mod for like a few days basically. So that's how he knew who to hit. This raid was a risk that they would get no value because technically they weren't really aimed at any spawners or anything like that, but they knew whose boxes they were kind of aiming at. That's the main thing. Some big names, some big enemies. I think one of the leader boxes actually. So now they are on to the raiding process. It's a good bit in. I think they're nearly about to breach. I have no idea. I haven't seen it. I think they've already breached. So this is actually when they breach. I don't know. Oh no, he's gone back to his base, I think. Hang on. Replay viewer is really glitchy. The amount of time that I need to restart this and start again. And there we go. Now he goes back to the cannon. So they're still stacking sand, still raiding. They've built kind of a box around it, but I don't really think that's going to stop any enemies if they really wanted to come and find it. Oh, actually, the cannon blew up. Ah, interesting. So I think if I skip a little bit more in, I believe that's when they actually raid this bad boy. So I'll skip like a few minutes in and see what happens. So after a few hours of building the cannon and raiding another base, then cannoning this base, they finally breached the base. And like I said, they didn't breach anything amazing. They don't know what they're really breaching because they weren't going for cannons. They were going for chest rooms. So they're after breaching into a regen chest. Now they're raiding chests. Oh my god, I wish I was here. This is my first time seeing it. And to raid a chest room like that. Oh, I just wish I was there. Apparently, there was loads of prop 4. There was loads of sharp 5s. They got a few masks. It was a lot of PvP stuff. Because this faction is very well known for PvPing. So they raided this chest room. And then broke into this. And yeah, they got loads of prop 4. They got loads of, they got a few masks. They basically ended up raiding over nearly $20 million worth of stuff from the faction. So the faction didn't lose all their value, I don't think, but they lost a decent few. And that is really it. And um, this is the raid. This is the base that they raided. I'm just going to pause time now. Now, they didn't raid anything up here. They just literally went for everything down here. They raided these two boxes, but they knew whose boxes these were. So all in the time while I was sleeping, they ended up doing everything without me. They did the most amazing stuff and I just, I just hate the fact that I was asleep. I really wish I was here, but at least Twin was here, so hopefully he recorded it. So make sure to go check out his channel if you want to see the actual footage of it and see what's inside the chest. But um, yeah, that was a, a story time episode because I wanted to make sure that you guys knew what was happening in the series and knew what was going on. And it's following my faction and me. And yeah, thank you for Mikey who uh, actually recorded all this with Replay Viewer. It's nice that I actually get to experience it and see it and you guys get to as well. And yeah, instead of just hearing about it, I can actually see kind of what went down from Mikey's perspective. So for the big reveal, I can now confirm I have no idea how long we're going to be here for. Um, things change. Um, people are grinding. There's some amazing factions that are competitors and stuff. But for today anyway... We are the richest faction on the server with over $106 million. We went from something like, we went from around about $56 million to over $106 million. But that wasn't from that one faction we raided. It was from the second faction as well. So like, I don't know how much value we made in total. I wasn't there at the raid. If I kind of knew, I could have kept track of things. But yeah. For now, for today at least, or, well, I hope for today at least, we are the richest faction on the server. We are the first faction technically to ever reach $100 million on Overlord, so that'll always be history, I guess. So that's, that's cool. But like I said, there's some amazing factions out there that could easily be us. So I guess we'll, time will see if we'll hold the title or not. But uh, so far, things are going really well. Faction, congratulations to you. A little bit salty I wasn't online, but what can you do? I needed my beauty sleep. <laughs>
So yeah, all this kind of stuff here, and this is kind of what they raided from the base, most of it, a load of axes, a load of freaking armor, because this faction is like, they're like freaking, they're like the freaking war zone gods, you always see them about, they're pretty darn good at PvP, but yeah, loads of sharp fours, loads of sharp fives, freaking insane, there was a point in the map where we had barely any armor, and now we're kind of swimming in it, and this armor is worth quite a bit of value as well. Oh, Mikey said BK's vault is full as well. Oh, God. Yeah, it is. I don't even... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, you can definitely tell these guys are definitely a PvP faction. Oh, this would have been so fun to raid. Oh, I would... It just would have been satisfying. It makes me want to raid my own faction right now, just so I can get the feeling. You know what I mean? Maybe I could raid my own faction. Any want to... Any offers for an inside? 100 mil? Easy. But, yeah, I'm not really too sure if I should be showing this off on that camera right now, because I'm pretty sure... Um, the F top 2 faction are like, alright, we know exactly where to aim for, guys. Don't waste your time. Just set up a cannon and raid the top of the base. <laughs> oh, dude, this guy has tons of heads and everything as well. And apparently, yeah, they did raid a decent few masks. I wonder if, like, some of these are actually them. I don't know where they are. But, yeah, this guy has got loads of heads. I don't know if they came from that base or just the heads that he collected. 16,000. I'm not going to sell any. I'm just, just curious to see if any are worth any value at all. Yeah, there's some worth about 30k, but I would sell them, but... It's not mine. So yeah, that's the story of how um, our faction became F-Top. For how long? Who knows, but just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Now I guess I'm going to have to pick up the slack of raiding and actually make up because like, they literally made 50 million and I wasn't even online. Kind of like, I really do need to pick up the slack. Like I am, I'm meant to be their leader, but they just do things without me. And I guess that's what I love about them. I love them. They make me clickbait. <laughs> So before I end off this episode, I am going to open up this last enchanted charm that I have. Now, Mystical Charms got released um, last Saturday, and so did Titan. So I'll probably be opening up some Mystical Charms soon, and we'll probably be doing some boss mobs fairly soon. Because there's some things that I really do want to grind towards, and I do want to get off the boss mobs. Like, I think Hyperion drops the Mystery Mob Mask, like where you can get two masks in one. I want to get one of those. Those things are freaking OP. But anyway, let's open up this enchanted charm and let's see if I can maybe make a bit of money so I can like say to my faction like, Hey, look, I made some F top value today. <laughs> but yeah, a lot happened over the weekend. I know this was a different episode compared to normal, but I just wanted to uh, share that experience and show what happened. And thank God Mikey had it recorded. But anyway, we just got that better. That could be a soul pouch. But if it's a money pouch, I'm going to be pretty happy out. Actually, a soul pouch would be pretty decent. Because I do want to start making a little bit of a demigod set at least. But anyway, we just got 12 bloody notes, which I was expecting. And a basic soul pouch. Alright, so it's not a basic money pouch. Those things are pretty good. You can get like 100k. But it's a soul pouch. Now, I do, I did say that I, I want to start making a demigod set. I have currently right now 5,000 souls. How much can this give you roughly? Doesn't say. Alright, well, let's pop this thing open and see. If we get over 1,000... I'll be happy out. Three, two, one, boom. Pop this open. Well, we got 2,000. I said anything over 1,000, I'll be happy out. I'm happy out now. <laughs> and then we got 12 bloody notes. These things are a hit and miss. They can be amazing or just terrible. I currently have about 350k. I know Mentrix opened one of these the other day. Guess how much money he got. Take a guess down in the comments. Comment. You guessed? $44 he made from a bloody note. Wow. That's a lot of money. Anyway, let's open these things up and let's see what we get. Three, two, one, boom. 27,000, $209, 1,000, 4,000, 31K, decent, 2K, 7K, 18K, 31K, 9K, 2K, 49K. Not too bad. And that brings us up to $535,000. Decent. Anyway, right, guys, I'm going to end off this episode. Next episode, I am going to be trying to get to level 7 as best as possible. Or maybe do a raid if I can find one, which I'm about to go see if I can find one now. But it is very important that I try and get to level 15. And it's very important for the whole server to try to get to level 15 head hunting level. Because trust me, it's going to be big. Can't say yet, but it's going to be big. Try to get to level 15 by the end of this month. Just, just try. Can't reveal everything, but just, just try. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next episode. Comment down below if you think we'll still be at top for next episode. Let's see what happens. We're probably going to get split in the next episode. I can feel it coming. I can just, I can feel the title coming. We lost our $100 million. Poorest faction on server. 
it's coming. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.